Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. Okay, so today we are taking a look at Synthmaster 1 being played, well, three Synthmaster 1s being played by three Rosetta arpeggios. So three Rosetta arpeggiators. And I'm also using another one from the Rosetta suite, the XOX, which is playing Roosemaker just for some rhythms. And then I have a fourth Synthmaster here playing this sound. is just brilliant and if you're interested that sound is key orbit 2 okay so how do we have this set up first of all I've opened three Rosetta ARPs here like this and on each of these ARPs I've set the latch to be on because when I play a keyboard a key, a key on my key step I want this ARP to start now if I engage the first one here and I'll turn the volume down for this one playing the chord. Just for just for uh, reference, all these synth masks are, are set to my um, Artoria key step via the Steinberg interface. So, for example, if I tap on this here, this ARP is playing this synth master. Okay, so the routing for that is MIDI output to the first synth master here, which is this one, okay? And if we go back, the MIDI input for the arpeggiator is coming from Steinberg URC 16 port one, which has my um, um, Artoria key step plugged into it. And it's the same for all of them. If we looked at this second one here and the third one, the MIDI input is coming from the Steinberg port one. And then the MIDI input for this one is also coming from the Steinberg port one. And you will see that the MIDI output here is going to the second synth master. And the MIDI output for this one is also going to the third synth master. So all synth masters are playing these arpeggiators. If I hold them now, I have latch switched on. So what's going to happen as soon as I press play on my keyboard, uh, a chord, I can let go of the keyboard and it will carry on. And when I change chord, it won't overlap those chords. It will just change the chords. And this makes this brilliant. So for instance, now I don't have to have the transport running just yet, but I'll switch it on anyway. And we have this XOX here, just playing a very simple rhythm from Ruse Maker. Now, as soon as I put, now this is turned down, this is also connected directly to Steinberg port one, which is where my MIDI keyboard is going, but it's not being controlled by any LFO, so it's independent. So if I play uh, an F chord now, all these arcs are gonna start playing, and so is this chord here. If I have the volume turned up, you'll hear it, but I won't do that just yet. So, I've got all the arpeggios set slightly different direction for this one is going up. Clock division is six and it's going over two octaves. This one here is clock division is two going over one octaves and it's going up and down. And then the third one here is going uh, clock division three, two octaves and then double up. So when I press F now, all in time and if I just change a chord so I'm just playing the keyboard now so I can fade these out if I bring this back in now this is only going to play while the keyboard is held but it's going to change the chord for the ARPs because all of this stuff is linked to the keyboard. No matter how fast I change chords. And you can go in and all going to be in time we can do the 
the same kind of Anytime you like. second hour. Now we can mutate and shuffle. So mutate will vary the sequence. And we can kind of do the same thing with XOX as well if we go in here. We have this mutation. So let's mutate the kick drum a bit. And the snare. And the closed hats. Very cool. So you get an idea of uh, some of the cool stuff you can do. Now, I will very quickly, let me just disconnect all these. Like this, and I will quickly set one up for you from scratch just to show you exactly what to, <clears throat> what to do. So let's go all the way over to the end and let's turn the volumes down for these. So we're not hearing anything but the new one we're going to set up. So let's be just pretend this is a blank page. I'm doing it like this because... Um, my microphone's plugged in and I'll have to reset it and all the rest of it and blah, 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 blah. So first thing we'll do is a MIDI <clears throat> and then an audio channel. In the audio, we'll open up. You can use whatever synth you like. I'm going to choose Synth Master. And just to find a sound, I'm just going to hook this up to my um, keyboard. And we'll go in here and we'll go browse and... Plucked sound maybe would be good for this. So we'll go plucked uh, or pluck strings be great. Let's just go down here and. Nice, we'll use that. Then in this, I'm going to set up a audio unit extension and it's gonna be Rosetta Arpeggio. Okay, now we can disconnect Synthmaster from the Steinberg now, so we'll just do that. There'll be nothing at all. <clears throat> so what we want to do is go into the Rosetta R, little toaster menu. And when it says MIDI output, we want to send MIDI from Rosetta Arpeggiator into Synthmaster. So click on MIDI outputs here and then choose the Synthmaster or the Synth you want to use well we know that this is the last synth master and it's this one down here which is called it's in number nine so if, just close that for a sec you'll see number channel number nine so you can open that midi output go and find it here number nine and now this arpeggiator is connected to here but Playing the keyboard won't do anything until we hook up the arpeggio to the, the arpeggio to the keyboard or to whatever you want to give MIDI to it, like chord bud or scalar or something, you know. 
but I'm going to use my keyboard. So MIDI inputs now, we want something to send MIDI into the ARP. So MIDI is going into the ARP and it's going out of the ARP into Synth Master. So we're going to click on this. We're going to go Steinberg URC or whatever your MIDI controller is. I'm going to hit port one. And now when I play my keyboard, it's going to be sending MIDI off to Synth Master. Now, let's open this up and see what we can do. So it's a very, very simple interface. This is the default setting, obviously. It's getting its info from MIDI channel one. That's fine. All of them are because I want to control everything. Now, if you also, uh, your keyboard uh, responds to velocity, you can do all the velocity uh, stuff here. Um, right, okay, so the slower the clock division, uh, the lower the clock division, the slower it's gonna be. And then. All the way up, up to eight. Octaves is self-explanatory. The more octaves you have, the more it's gonna track over the synth. So this is just going one octave. So you have a maximum range of three octaves. Shuffle will literally just... Shuffle uh, pattern over up to 50%, I guess. Okay. Mutate, let me just put this onto Clock Division 2 so it's a little bit quicker. Mutate, you heard it will actually shuffle the notes around. So the higher the number, the more likelihood of it being randomized. Now, the key thing here is the latch button. Okay, so when I play my keyboard now, when I let go, the ARP will stop. And this makes it difficult to keep time and it will sound odd. It, it won't quite sound right. So make sure that you have in your arpeggios, your Rosetta arpeggios, have the latch switch done for all of them, like I've, I showed you. And each time you press a key, it will all be latched perfectly to the BPM. Now, uh, again, I'll just play a couple of these different directions. Up, down, relative to the octaves, up and down. random and if you wrote you mutate the randomized you'll get like some total mad random madness <laughs> double up double down double up and double down <clears throat> very nice and then back to up That would sound nice up and down. Now, if I switch latch on, we can bring in the others. You will hear, I'll just do this with my finger quickly, that everything is now in sync. So we'll just push these back in and... Now you'll notice that they will start without the transport running, but if you switch transport on first, this will start your drum machine and we can then just play any chord we like. And there you go. 
There's how you can control, well, Synth Master, but you can do it with any synth you like with Rosetta Arpeggio, which is marvellous. I'm digging back into the Rosetta this week. I, th I think it's incredible, you know, and m most important thing to remember <clears throat> is if we have a look here, if we open a, a blank project, go to audio, select this, and um, actually it's in the effects, I think. Oh, it's in MIDI. Let me have a look in MIDI. Open a MIDI channel. Open this. It's in the audio unit extension. I will just type in Rosetta, Rosetta, there we go. And it's all of these are, are one app. All of these are part of one app. We are Arpeggio, the XOX, the LFO, the rhythm, the baseline particles, Collider, the XY pad, Rosetta cells, and Rosetta scalar. The scalar is the only one I don't actually use, but uh, you know, I know a lot of people that do, but all the rest of them I've used and I've done uh, tutorials for as well. So yeah. Awesome stuff. Top job. Cool beans. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Please consider becoming a Patreon or making a super thanks or a donation or something to help support me and Joe here at Science Test Room. Bless you all. Thank you very, very much for watching. And I will see you all later. Ta-ra.